In the current biodiversity crisis, determining what is the best way to allocate the limited resources available for conservation is very important. Where should conservation efforts be centered? So back in 2006, a woman named Amy Tucker, who after years of working for various companies, including on the official Nintendo Pokemon website, invented her own card game in a similar vein to Pokemon and other sort of trading card based games. This one now was called Zico, and it focused on Earth's biodiversity, specifically on the idea of a biodiversity hotspot. This game has unfortunately long been out of print, but before then it released four different expansion packs for its cards, which are Madagascar, Costa Rica, Indonesia, and China. So these are the Zico cards. This is the Indonesia deck. Um, they got a nice back. They're all printed on recycled paper. See, there's the Sumatran Tiger. Ah, the Resplendent Quetzal card, beautiful. I love the artwork in this game. It's just so gorgeous. Some of them have like either a second descriptor, so some information, or like a weird quote. And some of them they made up. So this one is, a blind fish never sees the bait. It's a Zico proverb. And that is in reference to this blind cave loach that lives in China. This used, these used to be for sale at zoos. And that's Zico. The biodiversity hotspot approach, first suggested in a 2000 paper, says that efforts to stem biodiversity loss should focus on places called hotspots. Hotspots are areas that have been identified as having an unusual concentration of endemic species and are being destroyed at an alarming rate. The specific criteria to make an area a hotspot is 0.5% of the world's plants must be endemic to it, and it has lost 70% of its historic vegetation cover. Vertebrate diversity is used as a backup and another metric to compare each hotspot, while invertebrates are completely omitted, with the assumption their biodiversity is similar to that of plants because some insect species pollinate only a single plant species. The area of a hotspot is determined by what is called biotic commonalities, that is having similar biotic composition that is separated from surrounding areas. This is easiest with islands in the ocean, Ecological islands like mountains are very particular floristic kingdoms. Some areas are larger like Mesoamerica or the Andes. If they were broken up into smaller areas, these smaller units would still meet the criteria, so they are lumped together to simplify the regions that need to be protected into 25 areas on the planet. These spots range from islands like New Zealand and Madagascar, to coastal California, the Mediterranean coast of Europe, and the Cape Floristic Kingdom of the southern tip of Africa. I have gone to some of the areas identified as biodiversity hotspots, such as the Mesoamerican forests of Costa Rica, parts of coastal California, and islands on the Hawaiian archipelago, part of the Polynesian Micronesian hotspot. Together, the 25 hotspots have 44% of plant life endemic to them, along with 35% of terrestrial vertebrates all in 1.4% of the Earth's land surface. When compared directly, the five hottest hotspots, those hotspots that are under the most threat and have the highest biodiversity are number one, Madagascar, number two, the Philippines, number three, the islands of Indonesia, number four, Brazil's Atlantic forests, and number five, the Caribbean. Though described as the silver bullet for conservation actions, there are a few issues with the hotspot approach. The biodiversity hotspot model essentially works to preserve as many species as possible in the smallest amount of area. It does not take into account many objectives of wildlife conservation beyond protecting biodiversity. It fails to maintain ecosystem function over most of the planet, protecting phylogenetic diversity for the future of life on Earth, and does not protect many of the most beautiful landscapes that people enjoy for aesthetic reasons. The idea of a biodiversity hotspot can lead to the idea that places like Montana should be ignored, while all conservation resources should be centered in Ecuador. If all that matters is species biodiversity, this could lead to allowing major ecosystems to be completely degraded because they have fewer endemic plants. It also ignores places with important ecosystem services like wetlands, where few species are endemic. 
Biodiversity hotspots are ultimately a simplification of how to conserve life and are not a silver bullet to solve all of conservation biology's problems. However, while not perfect, I do think the biodiversity hotspot approach does offer an idea of areas we should try to preserve before it's too late. But ultimately this has to be in conjunction with other conservation efforts to ensure the other goals of conservation are met. The biodiversity hotspot approach to conservation is an intriguing idea despite some of its drawbacks. I would love to hear your thoughts on this approach to conservation down in the comments section below. This video is part of an ongoing Fundamentals of Conservation Biology series with a new episode coming out each and every month. So if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel, and ring the bell so you can be notified when the next video in this series comes out. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Bye.